you guys care about the world? Let's start there. All right, good. Two of us. That's good. Yeah. I'm worried about it, you guys. I worry about the future. My wife tells me all the time, she's like, Tom, you got to stop. The only way you're ever going to be happy is if you figure out a way to stop worrying about the things you can't control, which uh, means I'm in for a lifetime on happiness. You know what I mean? That's all I do worry about is the shit I can't control. Who's worried about the things they can control? What kind of neurotic asshole are you, you know? <laughs> yeah, I'm not worried if my clothes match. I'm worried about economic collapse. You know? We named my son uh, Owen, because that's what we figure we're going to be doing for the rest of our damn lives. <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> Those things aren't cheap, Eddie. People are already telling me, dude, I'm worried about his financial future because people already are like, Tom, you should have started saving for his college four years ago, okay? That's 30 grand a year minimum. I'm like, 30 grand? Well, he is going to be home college because, uh, yeah, <laughs> online college. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The University of North Carolina Home College, where I will be teaching him that money is not important or real, you know? I remember the first time my son looked at me like I was an idiot, and any of you that are parents, you might know what I'm talking about, right? I was having a conversation with him about money, and I said, Owen, money is not what makes you happy in this world. And he just looked at me like, are you fucking new here? <laughs> Which, you know, he's right. So it got me thinking about money and what I know about money, and that made me think, because Socrates has said that the only true wisdom is knowing that you don't know. And uh, I've been married to the same woman for 17 years, so I don't need Socrates also telling me what I don't know. <laughs> One thing I do know is uh, my son was obviously right, very intuitively right as a, as a six-year-old. Money is important. It's actually the most important thing. And by definition in our country, by almost every definition, money is our God, right? If you think about it, it's what we worship. It's what we work 30, 40 hours a week for. It's what we want more than anything. It's what we think will make us happy. We have altars built all over the country in the form of banks that we bail out. Yeah. How many of y'all haven't stood in front of the altar of an ATM machine and prayed? Dear God, please let there be $100 in my account. And don't let this motherfucker behind me have a gun, please, God. Uh, I don't even know how it works anymore. I don't even get a check. All right, they wire it to my account, I press some buttons, it spits it out to me. I don't know how that works. That's faith. You know? And it's not real. It's based on nothing. It's not backed by anything. It's, it's, it, as long as we're making money up, shit, we should just use leaves. You know what I mean? That literally grows on trees, right? There's no need to go into, 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 uh, into slavery of debt. You know what I mean? Just fucking grab a rake, right? Every fall, you can get a new flat screen, a new car, or a country in South America. You know, whatever the fuck you need. You know? And I used to not worry about it. Before my son, I didn't even sweat money. Like things like national debt, I didn't give a shit. I'm like, really? We owe trillions of dollars? To who? To ourselves? Okay. Well, if I owe myself a hundred bucks, I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. We good. All right? I'm going to let that slide. Nothing enslaves people more than debt. It's the truth, man. And we don't owe that money to ourselves. Basically, we owe that money to the Federal Reserve Bank, which is a for-profit private company. Isn't that weird to think that there's people out there like Oprah and Bill Gates that have a lot of money, and then there's this tiny group of people that own the Fed, they actually own the money. Like, what, what a great business model you developed. You own the money? Yeah. We just make it up out of nothing. We sell it to you at interest. Can I do that? No. If you do it, it's counterfeiting. We throw your ass in jail. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking perfect system for them. And all the, the very name Federal Reserve is a deception to make the American people think it's part of our government, and it's worked. You know, the very people that are on the money were against the Federal Reserve system. Jefferson was against it, Jackson was against it, Lincoln was against it, Franklin was against it, fucking Sacagawea, you know she was against it, right? Yeah. And now they're on the damn money. That is an insult to their legacies. That's like putting Mother Teresa's face on condoms and passing them out of Planned Parenthood. Right? Well, the Mother Teresa condom. I died a virgin, so you don't have to. That's what's local. Yeah. Yeah. So it got me thinking, if you want to understand a government's foreign policy, you follow the money. And where does the money start? It starts with these elite bankers, and these people are evil, okay? If you're with a big bank, fuck you. I will no longer accept a check from you. Okay? 
I had a buddy of mine owed me $100. He writes me this check from Bank of America. He's like, you can run in and cash it on your way out of town. I go into his bank. Hey, I need to cash this. She's like, okay, we can cash this for you, Mr. Simmons, but it's going to cost you $6 since you don't have an account here. I'm like, well, uh, he has an account here, and he owes me $100, not $94. <laughs> You're actually making him commit fraud right now. She's like, well, that's just our system. I need to get your fingerprint. My fingerprint? You're the fucking one committing the crime here. Your ability to create money out of thin air isn't business advantage enough? You got to steal our money six dollars at a time? Let me ask you something. If that check is for five dollars, would I owe you a dollar? <laughs> yes, you would, sir. You're evil! That's what you are. You want my fingerprints, you better dust my ankles, because that's where they are right now as you ream my assets. <laughs> my wife tells me, she's like, Tom, don't get so mad at the banks. It doesn't do any damn good, you know? And she's right. Maybe it's, you know, I shouldn't get mad at the banks, but it's hard not to get mad at the banks, right? Jesus was the most chill dude ever. The only time he used violence in his entire ministry was on the money changers at the temple. What? Yes. Yeah. Look at that. You know how evil you got to be to piss off Jesus? Yeah, very. You got to be a banker or a fig tree, okay? That's it. And some of you might be atheists. I got a buddy of mine, he's an atheist. He gives me shit all the time. He's like, Tom, stop bringing up Jesus on stage. He's an imaginary, fictional, mythical character. I don't think that's true. Well, maybe the white Jesus, that's, he wasn't real. You know, whatever. <laughs> the the brown-skinned Arab Jew Jesus, and he was real because he was a carpenter, okay? You don't give imaginary people jobs, okay? They don't need them. Right? My buddy Larry, who I'm making up right now because I don't have a buddy named Larry, he doesn't have a job. You know why? Because he's not fucking real. That's why. You have to give me a few moments to make one up for him. He's a project manager at Hewlett Packard. That's what he does. You know? hmm. Yeah, if they were making up a job for Jesus, they'd have given him something more glamorous than Carpenter, right? He'd have been like beat reporter for the Nazareth Daily Bugle or a fucking whatever. A discount donkey salesman or some shit, right? <laughs> Come into Jesus' discount donkeys. We're doing half off. We have no credit, all credit, whatever the fuck you got. We forgive it. You know? Anyway, whatever. I'm just saying, he was a carpenter for many years in the, in, the, in the Bible, so he made a lot of things. Do you think when he was up on the cross that he looked at it all with a carpenter's critical eye? It's like, wait a minute. This isn't even level. <laughs> this is shoddy, shoddy workmanship. Nothing is plumb. The cypress is splitting. Oh, I'm getting splitters. Oh, forgive them, Father, for they don't build them like they used to. <laughs> Just saying. He made a lot of things. He had to make like a birdhouse or a chest of drawers or something. I think that's how we're going to find out he was real. You watch an antique rojo late one night. <laughs> right? Some appraiser will be like, wow, this scroll pole looks absolutely ancient. Let's see who made this. Jesus Christ! You got this at a yard sale? That, that is a beautiful, beautiful piece. Look at that. I think that healed my fibromyalgia. That is wonderful. Your financial worries are over, Tom. This is going to pay for a beautiful new home college. All right. uh, thank you very much. That's it. You guys are great. Okay. Yes! Tom Simmons, one more time. <laughs>